Welcome to Faces of the NCAA. We're here with Rachel Newman Baker, Director of Agents, Gambling, and Amateurism Activities at the NCAA. Welcome to the program. Great. Thanks for having me. How was your Thanksgiving? It was great. Wonderful. We had family in. Very nice. Do a lot of cooking? I did some. I had to have some help, but uh, I had both the mother and the mother-in-law here, so they, they helped me out. Tell me a little bit about what you do over in AGA. Sure. Well, we've uh, had a very busy year this year um, with uh, investigations and doing some new educational initiatives. We've got a brand new Don't Bet On It website that's getting ready to be launched in a couple of weeks that we're really excited about. Um, we've partnered with an outside um, creative group that has helped develop this, and it's going to be a great new interactive way for student athletes to um, learn about gambling and learn about the rules associated with gambling and the consequences. So, very excited about that. Now, when you say don't bet on it, I assume that you're not the person to go to to help fill out the NCAA brackets or uh, to place a wager. Is, no, you're not the expert. That would not be <laughs> us. No, that would not be our group. Actually, our rule covers student athletes and coaches, but we also have an internal office policy that covers any NCAA national office staff member as well. So, we're all covered by that. But, you know, it, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because we've had situations in the past where you know the general public or um, even uh, people affiliated with high schools don't necessarily understand our rules related right. to sports wagering and we had a staff member who was on assignment at a high school once um, while she was in the waiting room uh, to d waiting to do an interview with someone there at the high school the secretary in the office asked if she could help her fill out her bracket. <laughs> oh. So she then used that as an educational opportunity to explain, no, 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 that's not what we do. So, so she thought she was the expert yeah, and wouldn't have been able to figure out the brackets. Yeah. She thought she'd get an edge. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> or, or there is. There is. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So why is it so important that folks involved in intercollegiate athletics, your student athletes, your coaches, why can't they be betting on NCAA sponsored sports? It's not just college athletics. They can't bet, uh, bet on Major League Baseball games. Why right. is that? You know, it's actually something that's very interesting that a lot of people don't realize that the professional leagues actually have rules that govern their professional athletes related to gambling as well. And it really is to try and send a consistent message to our kids. If we're telling them, hey, look, you don't need to be wagering on athletics, if, if we try and start setting parameters of, but this is okay, but this is not okay, but this is okay, it, it just sends a mixed message. So in order to try and be consistent and to also show them how, you know, once you start getting involved, how it can span into all of the other different areas. Um, that's why our rule covers both. It covers both. Well, technology has really allowed folks to start placing bets from the comfort of their dorm room or from their home. I know when I was in college, some of my uh, friends used to play poker online and do all sorts of uh, gambling online. That's changed in the last couple of weeks. Have we seen something new? Well, we have. There's been some new legislation that we're very excited about that was recently adopted. And essentially what it's going to do is give our law enforcement folks some more tools to be able to actually go after some of these internet gambling companies and pursue them. And the only way that we're really going to be able to have an effect on some of this internet gambling is for law enforcement to actually be able to take some action. So, um, of course, we were very supportive of the legislation and are very excited to see how it plays plays out. Um, I think you've already seen several major internet sports wagering websites that have been shut down as a result um, uh, uh, of what was leading up to the actual passage of the legislation. So I'm sure there'll be more to come. Well, tell me a little bit about how you started here. Sure. You came here as an intern? I did, yes. I was an intern in enforcement, and this I actually had a great opportunity when I got here. Um, student athlete reinstatement was still housed in the enforcement services area, and so I got to get experience in both secondary violations, student athlete reinstatement, and agents gambling and amateurism. And you were a former high school basketball coach? Former high school basketball coach in the state of Kentucky, yes. Um, I did that for two years um, and loved every minute of it. It was a great opportunity. And when I moved here to Indiana, I actually had a chance to coach um, AAU girls basketball uh -huh. with a colleague here, Louie Ann Humphrey, and we had a great time doing that as well. What do you miss the most about coaching? Uh, just the interaction with the kids. It's, um, you know, it really br brings perspective back to this is why we come to work every day and this is why we do what we do is that interaction 
interaction and watching these young people develop and knowing that you're playing some small role in that. Now, you were a former student-athlete, two sports, yes. tennis and basketball? Yes, yes. I played basketball for two years at Berea College and um, played tennis for one. They actually, with tennis, it, it wasn't a, you know, a, a glory days kind of story. They needed some spots to fill a roster and, and heard I had played a little in high school, so they asked that me That works. Out. That yeah. works. <laughs> Has that experience helped you here as a as a director absolutely um you know just being able to draw on the fact that you know you were a student athlete so you do understand um, some of the challenges and the issues that face student athletes on a day-to-day -day basis and then I've been very fortunate both my sisters have been student athletes as well so I still feel somewhat connected um, to that community and, and it absolutely helps all right well you're expecting maybe another student athlete uh, let's hope yeah let's cross our fingers that she she'll she'll play something <laughs> all right well i know that you're due in the next few weeks so good luck to you thanks thank so you. much for taking the time thank, thank you to rachel newman baker and thanks for tuning into faces of the ncaa